Welcome back, bit of a random one today, but you like it when I keep things random. We're in my studio room today, and as you may or may not know, I play the drums and I used to teach the drums as well, and I used to teach the drums in this very room. And because I was teaching in here and making an absolute racket with a very, very loud drum kit, I needed to have a way of soundproofing this room. Now, if you're not already aware, if you're trying to soundproof a room to stop noise getting to the outside and to stop noise getting in as well, the biggest problem that you're gonna to have to sort out is your windows because that's going to be where the majority of the noise is going to get to the outside so you've got lots of options when it comes to sorting your windows out one of the best options is to go for triple glazing or even two layers of triple glazing that's the sort of thing that they do in recording studios to prevent noise getting between like the live room and the control room for example that's fine for a relatively small window but this is a great big double patio opening window door. So replacing that with two new triple glazed units would cost a fortune. And since it was always a bit of a temporary thing being set up in here anyway, I didn't want to go down that route. So I went for the route of retrofitting removable panels that I could fit on the inside while I wanted the room to be soundproof. And then once I was finished making a racket, I could easily take them away. Now I'm actually moving out of this room so this will be the last chance you'll ever get to see this room because me and my son are having a bit of a room swap and I'm going into a new room in a different part of the house and my son will be moving into here and he doesn't need this setup anymore so I'm going to be taking it all down and getting rid of the whole shebang. So I figured this was my last chance to show you how it all worked, but it worked really, really well. So to cut a long story short, what I ended up doing was I made a framework around the whole window door thing. So you'll see this framework that runs all the way around. That's just a, a softwood frame attached onto the inside wall. Uh, it's 34 mil by 34 mil timbers, which is a fairly standard size. And that just goes all the way round. And then I've made three great big MDF panels that all kind of interlock into each other. I'll explain the soundproofing side of things later on in the video. What I'll do, I'll get the panels fitted so you can see them, and then I'll talk about them a bit more. just show you this quickly so the bottom one has a rubber seal going along the bottom edge of the panel and that it's like a double seal just to provide a nice airtight seal along that edge and then all up this edge we've got another rubber seal that the panel presses against so that gets a good airtight seal between the back of the panel and the wall and then all of the panels so this is the bottom of the second panel all of the panels interlock with each other. So this one interlocks with the bottom one and then the top one interlocks into this one. It's one of those things that's tricky to show you once it's all up, but hopefully that makes sense. But they all interlock. go so pretty straightforward really just to give you a 101 on soundproofing I am trained as a studio engineer technically but I'm not an acoustics engineer there will be people out there who are way way more up to speed on acoustics than I am but I will tell you the very very basics of soundproofing if you want to soundproof a room density is what matters not bits of foam, not egg boxes. Egg boxes don't soundproof rooms. That is a myth. Egg boxes stop 
high frequency reflections so they will make a room sound dead and there'll not be very much echo because the high frequencies don't bounce around as much but they do almost nothing to soundproof a room. Soundproofing is all about density and, and also getting an air gap between dense layers as well can really help with soundproofing. So for example, you're probably better going for two double glaze windows with an air gap between each double glaze window rather than one triple glaze window, if that makes sense. Anyway, going off on a bit of a tangent there. But yeah, density is your friend. So brick walls are great. High density block walls are great. Thermalite isn't so great because you haven't got density on your side. The denser the product is, the better. So everything that you can do to maximize the density of what your walls are made of, the better. So all I'm using here is 18 mil MDF. Now you can go thicker or you could even push to like tiling it because ceramics, imagine the inside of a swimming pool. One of the reasons that it's all echoey and the sounds bouncing around forever inside a swimming pool is because ceramic, coupled with the concrete walls that are probably behind the ceramic, it's really dense and the sound's just reflecting everywhere inside a, inside a swimming pool. So if you want to really soup up the soundproofing on these, you could tile each panel. It would make it so heavy that you couldn't pick each panel up. But if it was gonna be a permanent fixture, tiling it is a pretty good option. These foam bits are there just to stop reflections. Uh, there's a wall over on that side of the room where the sound would just happily bounce off each wall and you get horrible kind of, you know, horrible reverb and echo in the room, which you don't really want, especially if you're doing recording and things like that. So that's what these bits are for. They're just to try and cut down on, on echo a bit as well. And then the panels, as I say, they all interlock. There's a rubber seal all the way around. And then these little plates here, they're not pretty, but they're gonna be covered up. You could make much prettier versions of those if you wanted something that looks a bit nicer. Uh, but I'll show you in a second. But these brackets pull the panels onto the wall and onto the rubber seal. So we've got a really nice airtight seal all the way around the window, which is another 101 of soundproofing. You want things to be airtight, as airtight as possible. Anything denser than MDF is gonna make these panels very heavy. These little brackets here, they're literally just screwed into the softwood battening around the side. And then when you screw these up, it really kind of pulls the panel against the wall and gets that nice airtight seal. And then each one's just got these big carry handles on to make them easy to pick up. You will have to take my word for it. You know, it's not 100% soundproof from the outside, but once you've got this and then the air gap and then the double glaze window, I can be playing a full on live drum kit in here and you can barely hear it outside. And all I do, because you don't particularly want to see these, you know, they're not integral to the decoration of the room or anything like that. Um, but all I've done is I've got wraparound curtains, like a wraparound curtain rail that goes literally round the whole room. Or this whole corner of the room. And that's how it sits while I'm playing me drums in here, making a racket. Did the job, time to move, and time to move into a, into a new room. I'm very excited about that. Couple of other little soundproofing absolute basics. Again, 
I'm not going to be going into soundproofing in loads of detail in this video. As I say, you need to think of soundproofing and acoustic treatment as two different things. Soundproofing is about stopping sound getting in or out. Acoustic treatment is about stopping a room sounding echoey. And you can completely line a room with foam and make your own anechoic chamber, but it'll not be particularly soundproof, but it'll also not be all reverby and echoey. But soundproofing, as I say, it's all about density. It's also about transmission of sound through solid surfaces. So any two surfaces that touch each other, sound will very easily transfer between one object that's making a racket through to another object that can almost amplify the sound. So floors are a big problem with drum kits because the floor acts like one giant amplifier. So if you're in a flat and you want to play live drums, you've got a bit of a problem. The general rule of thumb for how you get around that is you build a room within a room and you keep your room, your floor, isolated from your main normal room floor. And you would normally do that through joist hangers on the wall, but something that just provides complete separation between the floor that your noisy thing is sitting on and the floor underneath. Same goes for ceilings to an extent. Ceilings are a bit more forgiving because the thing that's making the sound isn't generally touching the ceiling. You're still gonna probably have to do something with your ceiling if you've got like a neighbor above you. It's still gonna be colossally loud, a drum kit to anyone in an upstairs flat. So that's still a problem. What you could think about there is maybe a false ceiling. Again, think more about trying to create an air gap. So you could bring this, but the trouble is then, is once you've raised the floor and lowered the ceiling, you're gonna be like trying to play the drums in a little two foot gap. Great if you've got a house with high ceilings. If you're in a new build, probably not an option. Anyway, absolute basics of soundproofing. Hope it's been of some use. I thought I might as well get one last use out of these panels before the goer journey. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. If you are an expert on soundproofing, I would love for you to comment down below as well. Any tips or suggestions for everyone watching this video where you can like help everyone out as well. Because as I say, I'm not an expert on soundproofing, but I know kind of the basics. And I'm a drummer, so I am an expert on making loud noises. Thanks for watching. See you next time.